This is a roughly 45 minute video providing a detailed tutorial of how to practice standing meditation, also known as Zhan Zhuang in Chinese martial arts, integrated into the formal body scanning method. The first 10 minutes are an explanation of the background and rationale for this approach, with the rest of the video describing the standing practice and basic movement exercises. Standing meditation is a foundation for many schools of Tai Chi and Xing Yi Chuan. This video is offered as a new perspective on standing meditation that expands on an approach which I believe is late in most explanations, but rarely explained in any depth. We begin with a static posture and then progress to a movement practice that emphasizes developing the six harmonies, as is the usual in Chinese martial arts. Standing meditation is commonly taught with an emphasis on focusing the mind on the Dantian. From the perspective of Buddhist meditation practices, this would be considered a form of samadhi, or concentration-oriented meditation, with the body as meditation topic. A complementary practice is vipassana, or mindfulness, which is based on observing the activity of the mind and senses in order to develop an insight into the habits and subconscious tendencies that may be obstructions, and then use that to cultivate habits and tendencies that support our long-term goals of freedom and personal welfare. When standing meditation is taught, it usually involves focusing attention on the Dantian. Sometimes implied, but not expanded on, is the complementary form of meditation, vipassana or insight, often referred to as mindfulness. In traditional meditation, concentration and insight are complementary practices that work together, often compared to two wings on a bird. In this video, we expand on the mindfulness aspect and apply a form of vipassana focused on bodily sensations in order to relax, strengthen the mind and body, and cultivate the needed qualities to observe and self-correct standing practice. As our bodily awareness improves, we will become more aware of ingrained postural habits which may be undermining our standing practice. Through these insights, we can guide our posture towards a proper form. With the proper posture, the fascial networks across our body are in a position to be connected up. Through sinking the sternum towards the dantian, we connect the fascia of the rib cage and shoulders to the deep and powerful fascia networks in the abdomen and pelvis. By using a gentle extension of the arms and neck, we connect the networks of the arms and head into the torso's fascial network. As we sit into the pelvis properly, we connect fascial networks of the legs up through the torso and into the lower abdomen. It may be helpful to imagine that the body's fascial network is like a giant stretched and elastic spider web that has its center at the dantian. The strands of the web are gently stretched but not rigid. At the same time, the web loses its integrity if any section of it goes slack. This is why it is important to cultivate the quality of relaxed extension from the torso all the way out to the fingers, the toes, and the crown of the head. Once we have connected the body together, we use a reverse abdominal breathing to activate the dense and powerful fascial tissue of the lower abdomen and hip joints. Then, through conscious coordination of the six harmonies, we extend this movement from the dantian out to the hands and feet. As we do this practice, make sure that we are paying attention to bodily sensations. We want to avoid using the eyes to look at a body part because we are trying to develop interoception. We also want to learn to initiate movements from the center of torso and not from the hands and shoulders. Please be clear that this is not a visualization. We do not imagine sensations or a bodily position. We want to pay attention to the sensations that are constantly being reported to us by our nervous system. Stay with the present moment. Avoid speculating about past causes or any future consequences for any sensations you may, occur, you may notice or any postural deficiencies. Avoid using this video for any longer than necessary. It's important to attend to the body and not to the slide deck or to the audio track. When you first start, this audio, this video, will be a detailed tutorial that walks you through very slowly and carefully. However, after the first few sessions, you should stop watching the video and only use the audio track as guide. And then eventually, don't even use the audio track. Just use the practice that you've already learned. And then you can do it at whatever time and speed you find appropriate. As you practice, the mind is naturally going to wander off task. Without judgment, bring it back to the task of observing the body. 
you should expect that the mind is constantly wandering off task. It is only through prolonged training that we're able to sustain our concentration and attention for longer and longer periods. The goal of this practice is to regulate the default mode network, otherwise known as the monkey mind in Buddhist terminology, through slow and steady focus on body scanning. We need to improve our bodily awareness and sensitivity and develop the use of intention. After practicing it, the expectation is that we're able to perform a full body scan with posture correction over the course of only a couple of minutes. You can make this longer if you like. It's expected that in normal usage, you may do a body scan for 10 minutes before you do your standing meditation. Or you can also take it much more slowly and take a whole 40 minutes to do your body scan. This will help you um, observe deeper issues in your posture and make more corrections. And you may also find it uh, very relaxing. To be clear, what we're practicing here is not formal Buddhist Vipassana meditation, but rather an adaptation of mindfulness of the body focused on developing the fundamental posture and body usage required for internal styles such as Taiji Chuan and Shinji Chuan. This practice promotes awareness of the overall state of the body, also known as interoception. Interoception has been a topic of neuroscience research for many years, and the nerves responsible for interoception are mainly found in the fascial tissue network across the body. It also turns out that interoception is processed in a different part of your brain from preproprioception or other mental activities, and as a result, is often a poorly developed capability. Sensory input from interoception operates more slowly in proprioception. Because of these differences, cultivating interoception requires patience and very specific practices. Improved interoception has many well-documented benefits. In contemporary neuroscience, the use of focused body scanning practices have been demonstrated to regulate the activity of the default mode network, which is responsible for mental wandering, rumination, and daydreaming. Activation of the default mode network corresponds to the Buddhist concept of the monkey mind, for which meditation is traditional antidote. The effects of default mode network regulation through meditation are very well documented, as well as the pathologies that correspond with the dysregulation of the default mode network. Through regular sustained practice of mindfulness of the body, we can learn to develop internal strength associated with Taiji and Xin Yi, as well as benefit from increased concentration, physical awareness, and the overall improvements to quality of life that are documented, that documented benefits of this form of practice. As we go through the body scan, you will notice that there are three main sections. The first section of the scan involves the center line of the head and torso, otherwise known as the Ren and Du meridians of the body. The next section expands the body scan to include the side of the body, from the ears to the shoulders to the hips, and then across the pelvis and shoulders. This expands our awareness to include the whole torso and head. And then finally, we extend the body scan to the soles of the feet and the palms of the hands. Note that we do this in a certain order that involves the front and back of the body because the front and back of the body are used for different purposes and they have different postural requirements. In the starting posture, we stand with our feet parallel, not pointed outwards and not pointed inwards. They should be shoulder width apart, no wider. Slightly bend the knees. Keep the head upright with a slight stretch at the back of the neck, the chin gently tucked in. Do not tilt the head forward. Allow hands to dangle heavily from the shoulders. Try to feel the natural weight of the arms tugging downwards on your upper trapezius muscles. Gently extend your fingers to feel a mild stretch from the fingertips to the center of your palms. As you progress, please close your eyes to avoid having your attention follow visual distractions in your environment. It's important that we focus our awareness on our bodily sensations. Try to keep your ears, shoulders, hips, and feet stacked vertically. Once again, I repeat that the starting posture has the arms hanging downward, which is different than sometimes taught in other standing practices. Over time, as our practice deepens, the arms will have a tendency to rise up automatically. 
This is due to the fascial networks in the arms becoming intentionally connected to the fascia in the front and back of the torso, and then up through to the crown of the head. As the chest and back relax and sink downwards, the spine from the perineum up to the crown of the head maintains a light upward energy of Shu Ling Ding Jing. It is the interplay of these two postural requirements that results in the arms rising on their own. It is not necessary and perhaps even counterproductive to raise the arms intentionally at the beginning. Leave the arms hanging down and allow them to eventually rise up on their own. From the posture, we begin by observing the sensations at the soles of the feet and the crown of the head. Feel the crown of your head, also known as the Baihui point, and then feel the soles of your feet. For now, rest your awareness on the soles of your feet. As you stand there, noticing the sensations in the soles of your feet, adjust your hip forward and then backward and left and right and see how the sense of weight in the soles of your feet changes. Adjust your hips so that the weight settles just behind the balls of your feet at the Yongchuan point and the hips feel centered between the crown and the Yongchuan. Next, you want to feel the connection between the crown of your head and your perineum. Bring your awareness from the soles up from your legs to your perineum, also known as the Hui Yin point. This is the point midway between your anus and your sexual organs at the very bottom of your torso. As you stand there, try to see if you can feel both the Bai Hui and the Hui Yin point simultaneously. Gently pull up from perineum. Relax your glutes and hamstrings and relax the lumbar muscles and relax and sink the torso into the hips. Try to get a feeling of the Hui Yin point supporting the Bai Hui point in a column up the center of your torso. Bring your awareness back to the crown of your head and then let's start scanning down from there. Bring your awareness from the crown of your head to your hairline and then rest your awareness on the middle of your forehead. Notice any sensations in your forehead. You should be able to feel the sensation of the air on your skin. See if you notice if there are any tensions in your forehead or your brow. From there, try to scan inwards from your forehead into your cranial cavity above your sinuses. Often we don't notice any sensations in there unless we have a headache. But in fact, your nervous system is constantly reporting sensations from that part of your body. Try to tune into it and become aware of what your body is telling you. Next, from the middle of your forehead, scan down to the point in between your eyebrows. Notice if you're carrying any tension in your eyebrows. Maybe you're raising an eyebrow, maybe you're squinting. If you notice it, please just try to relax it. As you do this, do not engage in large motions or shaking motions to try and shake something free. You want to have a very conscious, direct, and um, directed relaxation. From the point in between your eyebrows, scan backwards through your head. Notice the sensations in the top of your sinuses, and then continue scanning backwards to the back of your skull. See if you can notice the base of your skull, also known as the jade pillow point, where your spine meets the back of your skull. Is there any tension there? Is it compressed? You want to get a sensation of slight extension and stretching back there. Bring your awareness back to the point in between your eyebrows. Now, bring your awareness to your sinus cavity. Start by noticing the sensation of the air coming in and out of your nostrils as you breathe. Notice the cool air coming into your nostrils as you inhale and notice the warmer air 
I mean, I agree with your last choice as you exhale. Follow the sensation of the flowing air into your nostrils. Feel the air come into your sinuses and go out of your sinuses. Cool the air enters your sinuses and flows down your throat. And then on the exhalation, warm air comes up your throat and then out your nostrils. As you observe sensations in your sinuses, see how slight adjustments to your head position change the sensations of the tissues in your sinus cavity and throat. Try tucking your chin in a little bit more and stretching the back of your neck and feel how that affects the sensations in your sinuses and throat. Next, tilt your chin forward as if you're slightly looking up and notice how that affects sensations in your sinuses. Return back to the original position of the chin slightly tucked in and the jade pillow at the back of your head slightly extended. Try to adjust it so you feel a slight stretch from your sinuses down your throat. See if you can notice the sensations from your sinuses out to your ears in the eustachian canal and maybe up into your tear ducts. Notice sensations going all the way back to the jade pillow as well. Try to feel everything, all the sensations from your nostrils back into your sinuses, all the way back to the base of your skull at your jade pillow point. Bring your awareness back to your nostrils and scan down your throat, following the path of the air as you inhale and exhale. Rest your awareness at the base of your throat. Notice if you have any tension there. This is the top of your rib cage where your collarbones meet at the base of your throat. Do you have any tension in your neck? Is your throat tight? If it is, gently relax it. Notice the air, sensation of the air flowing in and out as you breathe. Scan backward to the base of your neck. Notice any tension you may be keeping in the base of your neck. If, like many people, you spend much of your day staring at screens or worse, staring at a phone, you may have a lot of tension there because your head is typically tilted forward. See if you can adjust your head position to eliminate any tension in the back and relax your throat. Feel for any tension along the whole base of the neck, the front, the sides, and the back. Are you carrying any tension in the trapezius muscles? If you are, then gently and directly relax them. If you're finding it hard to relax them, then just rest your awareness on them for some period of time and see if through gentle awareness you can cause it to release. Under no means, circumstances, should you shake your shoulders or crank them around to try and relax them. Return your awareness to the base of your throat and use the intention of sinking the base of the throat down towards your lower abdomen. Relax the rib cage and see if you can have your front of your chest slightly hollow. Continue scanning down from the hollow of your throat down to the middle of your sternum. Feel the sensation in the middle of your chest. Are you carrying any tension in the muscles on either side in the pectoral muscles? Relax the sternum area and allow it to hollow and sink downwards towards the lower abdomen. Scan inward and see if you can feel your beating heart. The sensation of your beating heart is, it's always there, and, but your awareness of it may be stronger or weaker. Rest your awareness on the heartbeat momentarily and see the sensations that arise as you do that. See if you can notice the upper and lower chambers of your heart beating distinctly. And maybe you can notice the sensation of the blood pressure as the heart pumps the blood through the arteries. 
continue scanning back to the spot in between shoulder blades. Relax your shoulders and allow them to sink. At this point, I want to really emphasize what is known as Han Chong Ba Bei, to hollow the chest and raise the back. The sternum should be hollow and concave, and the back in between your shoulder blades should be rounded and convex. If you imagine that your torso is kind of like a spoon, with the hollow part of the spoon being the front and the rounded part of the spoon being the back. This gives you an idea of how you should have your torso. However, you don't want to like curve it too much or use muscular tension to do that. But the important part is that you relax and sink the sternum and allow the shoulders to round. Once again, the important part is to use sinking and relaxation, not to use tension to force your body into a concave shape in front and convex in the back. Once again, everything is sinking to the dantian in the lower abdomen. Try and feel everything from the sternum all the way to the spot in between your shoulder blades. Relax and sink it down. Sink the weight to your dantian, and then sink your dantian to your, your soles of your feet in the Yong Chuan point. Try to avoid having weight rest on your heels. Continue scanning downward to your solar plexus. Feel your solar plexus engaging as you do your breathing in and out. Notice the sensations through that part of your body on the front. Scan backwards through the large muscle of your diaphragm all the way to your kidneys and back. Your kidneys and back are known as the Mingman, the light gate. It's important that you learn how to manipulate this area. So rest your awareness on it and try to be aware of all the sensations around it. Are you tight? Do you feel any sensations? sensations of stress or strain there. Try to relax, sink it, and notice any sensations along that whole area, around your kidneys, around the base of your rib cage, to the front of your diaphragm. If you can, rest your awareness on the whole path from the solar plexus to the kidneys, and sink your solar plexus, make the front of your torso concave, and feel the Mingman area expand and sink downwards, becoming more round so that it's convex. Concave in front, convex in back. Continue scanning downward from our solar plexus to your Dantian, roughly two or three inches below your belly button. Think of it as being centered between the top ridges of your hip bones. As you rest your awareness there, gently pull up the perineum, relax the buttocks and hamstrings, and allow the muscles where the spine meets the pelvis to relax. Try to feel as if the front of the pelvis is like a cup receiving the weight of your body settling down from the crown along the frontal center line. The lower back is relaxed, and by adjusting the position of the hips, and relax in the back of the thighs to see if you can settle your lower back down so it slightly cups. Shift your weight. Make sure that you're not sitting on the points of your heels. You should be a little bit behind the balls of your feet. And this will allow you to relax your buttocks and hamstrings more. Continue scanning down to the perineum. Rest your awareness at the perineum and see if you can feel the connection from the perineum to the opposite end of the torso, which is the crown of your head. As you settle into it and you gently pull up the perineum, see if you can eventually detect a gentle column of pressure from the hui yin rising up to support the bai hui up on the crown of your head.
Now we come underneath and start to return trip on the back of the body. Feel the back of your pelvis and try to relax it into a convex position. Feel the front in the Dantian. Concave in front, convex in back, relaxed, sinking. Scan up along your spine, your lumbar vertebrae. Notice any tension you may be keeping in the erector muscles along the spine. Come up to the kidneys. Notice any sensations you have in the back of the torso around the kidneys. If it's tight, try to release it. Scan forward to the front, to the solar plexus. Convex at the kidneys, concave at the solar plexus. Continue scanning up your back to the spot in between your shoulder blades. See if your shoulder blades, see if you're pulling your shoulder blades together. If so, release it and let your shoulder blades sink down. And if you can hollow your chest, then your shoulder blades will naturally sort of rest on your rib cage. Scan through all the way to your heart. Feel your heart beating. Feel your sternum. Feel the whole area from the back in between your shoulder blades to your sternum in front. Relax, sink in the front. Concave at the sternum, convex in between your shoulder blades. See if you're keeping any tensions in your chest. And if you are, release them. If you're holding tension because of a postural problem, see if you can adjust your posture so you can release the tension. Continue scanning up your back to the base of the neck. Feel for any tension you may be keeping across the back of your shoulders and the back of your neck. Scan forward through your throat to the hollow of your throat. Notice any tension you may be keeping in your upper lats, at the base of your throat, or in your neck. Release it. Relax. Sink in front. Concave in front, convex in back. Continue scanning up to the base of your neck, to the jade pillow point, and then return to the crown of your head. Now that we're back to the crown, try to reconnect it with the perineum. As you're at the crown, notice the hui yin point or perineum at the bottom of your torso. Adjust it, see if you can feel that as you settle your weight into your pelvis, it creates a return pressure that comes up and supports the crown of your head. It's important that we do not try to direct any pressure towards the crown of the head. And under no circumstances should we ever attempt to send pressure to the crown of the head. We only want to sort of sink into the torso and see if by sitting into it, we get a return pressure coming from the ground up to the crown of the head. Once again, check that you're maintaining Han Shung Ba Bei. Rounded chest, hollow chest, and pulling the back concave in front of the torso and convex across the back of your torso. Now we'll be in the second stage where we scan down the side of the body. From the crown of your head, scan down to your ears. Notice any tension you may be keeping at your temples or at your TMJ joint. Are you clenching, clenching your jaws or your teeth? Release it. Scan down from your ears along the side of your neck to your shoulders. Feel the side of the shoulders, the muscles there, heavily and sinking down, even as the crown of your head is still rising up. Try to feel as if your ears are sinking down to your shoulders. Relax all the muscles along the neck and shoulders and feel them sink downwards, stacking down towards the hips. Continue your scan down from the shoulders, down each side of your rib cage. 
as the weight settles into your hips, make sure you maintain the relax relaxation of the hamstrings and glutes while pulling up on the perineum, allowing the lower back to relax so the pelvis can settle into a position like a bowl scooping under and up the front. It's catching the weight of the upper body and settling it onto Yongchuan point on the feet. So what we have is the ears relax down to the side of the neck, which relax down to the shoulders, which then relax down to the hips. And the weight settles down to the Yongchuan point on the soles of your feet. From here, we're going to scan deep into our pelvis and notice where any tension may be keeping there. Scan into the hip joint where the femur seats into the socket of the pelvis. Notice all the muscles and tissues along the joint and see if you can scan into the joint and feel for the space in between your thigh bone and pelvis. You actually have tissues there that can report the status and state of that. Try to tune in on it and notice anything that it may be reporting to you about tension or position. If you notice any tension or imbalanced tension between left and right, try to adjust your position so that it's balanced. We want to avoid any hot spots of tension across the pelvis and lower back. From here, scan up your back along each side of your spine until you reach the shoulder blades. See if you can notice the sensations underneath the shoulder blades and into the socket joint where the upper arm plugs into the shoulder socket. Scan underneath the upper lats that are at the base of your neck, each side of your neck. Bring your awareness across the collarbone underneath all the muscle tissue there. See if you can notice sensations there and sink the shoulders down. If you notice any tension or hot spots, rest your awareness on it and see if you can use directed relaxation to sink them and get rid of the tension in the chest and shoulders. Scan across the front to the sternum. Feel the rib cage and upper shoulders sink and relax. See if you can become aware of all the sensations across the whole upper shoulder area from the spot in between the shoulder blades, under the shoulder blades, into the shoulder joints, to the sternum, and through the torso with the heart beating inside. Sink it all down. Hollow the chest, round the back. Check where the weight is falling into the soles of your feet and readjust. Make sure that you're setting the weight onto the Yongchuan point behind the balls of your feet and not into your heels. With your awareness on your sternum, scan down the front of your body along the center line. And then once again, loop underneath at the perineum up to the back of your pelvis and rest your awareness on the back of the pelvis. Now that we have finished scanning the second loop, we'll bring the extremities in. We want to scan down the buttocks on both sides of the hamstrings. Try to relax the buttocks and the hamstrings, the glutes and the hamstrings. Adjust the hips so the weight settles onto the Yongchuan, allowing the back of the thighs to relax and shifting the load to the front of the thighs. As you do this, you'll notice that the the lactic acid burn in your quads will increase dramatically. This is actually a standard part of the practice because what's happening is as you learn to relax the muscles in the back side of your legs, more of the muscles in the front of your legs have to pick up the slack. This is a previously unencountered load on your muscles, so they're straining to adjust. If you can, hold it, hold it through the burn you may experience muscle tremors. It's just part of the training. If you experience knee pain, you should try to adjust so that the knee pain goes away. If you cannot make the knee pain go away, 
then you should stand higher so that the knee pain is eliminated. You may feel burning in your quads, maybe in the uh, um, tendons that connect to your knees, but you should not feel pain in your knee at all. If you are, then look for any positions of your hips or your feet, which may be generating a load on your knees and try to adjust until the knee pain goes away. Often this is because you have an imbalance in how you're weighting your legs between left and right, or you may be turning one leg out, or you may be carrying a lot of tension in your hip joint. Look for all those causes of knee pain and try to eliminate the source of them. As you continue scanning downward from your glutes and hamstrings, notice the sensation at the back of your knees, kind of like the inside elbow of your knees. What are the sensations there? Slowly scan around the knee joint until you come to the front and just become aware of all the sensations around your patella and along the side of your knees. Notice if you have any imbalances or discomfort there. Adjust until they go away, which may mean that you need to come up higher in your stance. Over time, as you do this more, you become much more aware of like how changes in your posture and the position of your hips can either cause or remove knee pain. Look for problems with your stance. For example, are your feet too wide? Are your knees pointing at, are your toes pointing outward? Are your knees pointing in a different direction than your toes? You want to see if you can get your knees to point in the same direction as your big toe. Continue scanning downwards from the back of your knees to the Achilles tendon. Rest your awareness around your ankles for a moment. Then bring your awareness to the soles of your feet. Scan from the ankles to the outside edge of both feet along the pinky, pinky toe. Feel where the weight is settling into the soles of your feet. And adjust your hips to make sure the weight is settling just behind the ball of the foot. Lightly grip the ground with your feet so the heel is unweighted and there's a slight tension across the arches. We want to lightly grip the ground with our toes in order to engage the fascia across the bottom of our foot and remove any slack there. We also want to create a slight suspension so that our weight doesn't settle heavily onto our heel. Now from there, scan up through your foot to the shins in front of your left calves. Become aware of the sensations on your shins as you scan upwards along the inside and front of the lower leg. Continue scanning until you reach your knees. Once again, view the sensations around your knees. Make sure that you eliminate, eliminate any pain you may be experiencing there by adjusting your position or height of your stance. So from the knees, you want to scan up the front and inside edge of your thighs, up towards the crotch and cranium, and into your dantian. From the perineum, make sure you're lightly pulling up the perineum and see if you can get, as you pull the perineum, you feel a slight stretch going down the inside of your thighs. At the same time, lightly grip the ground with your toes and see if by doing that, you can establish a slight stretch coming up from the soles of your feet up towards your knees. Ideally, you want to have the stretch from the soles of your feet meet the stretch coming from the perineum so that you have a slight sense of tension pulling from your perineum all the way down to the Yongchuan point on the soles of your feet. Once you have that from your Dantian in front, try to feel the back of your pelvis and then 
extend your awareness down along both the front and back surfaces of your feet. Try to feel the back side of your legs from the buttocks down to your hamstrings, back of the knees, down to the calves, to the Achilles tendon, to the soles of your feet. And then on the return trip, feel it from the soles of your feet, to the inside of your calves, to your knees, to the inside of your thighs, and back to your Dantian. Try to feel the whole path from the back of your legs down to the soles of your feet, and then back up from the inside of your legs to your Dantian. From the perineum, let's bring our awareness up along the lumbar vertebrae. Feel for any tension you may be keeping on your spine. Once again, check if you want to have it convex in back, concave in front. From the shoulder blades, you want to scan along the back side of your body, of your upper arms, to your pinkies. So spread your awareness from your shoulder blades out and down the back of your arm along the triceps towards the elbows. Are you keeping any tension there? If you are, try to release it. Try to feel the weight of gravity tugging on your arms. Slight stretch. From the elbows, continue scanning along the outside pinky edge of the forearm. Feel the whole length of the back of your arms from the shoulder blades to the pinkies. Move your awareness from the pinkies to the center of your palm. Gently extend your fingers and lightly cup the palms of your hands. Do you take out any limpness or slack across the palms? Try to get a slight, gentle stretch from your fingertips all the way to the palm of your hands. Keep your fingers extended and slightly bent. Do not bend them into like a hard, sharp 90 degree angle. Scan up from the palms to the inside of the wrists to the crook of the elbow. Then scan along the biceps to the front of the shoulders and then on to the sternum. As you sink your sternum, see if you can feel that create a, a stretch from the center of your sternum all the way to your upper arms. Then try to feel the stretch from the palm of your hands up along the inside of your wrists to your elbows. Allow your arms to hang down and see if the arms hang down takes out any residual slack so you can feel a stretch from the center of your sternum across the front of the shoulders down the inside edge of your arms to the palm of your hands. Feel the sensations from the back of your shoulder blades out across the back of your arms to your pinkies and then from the pinkies all the way back to your sternum and through the sternum through to the center of your back once again. Try to feel the whole assembly of your arms in the upper chest. Hollow it in front, round it in back. This will help you take out any slack or kinks in your fascial suit. Sink the sternum downwards. Keep the head upwards. From the sternum, scan down the center line again to your crotch, to your perineum, and then up your back, paying attention to see if it, everything is relaxed and sunk, and that it is convex in back, matched with a concave in front. Rest your awareness to the nape of your neck. Next, bring your awareness all the way to the crown of your head. Try to feel your whole body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet and out to the palms of your hands. See if you can be aware of your body in all six directions, upwards and downwards, forward and back, left and right. Feel where your weight is sinking into the soles of your feet. Once again, adjust so that the weight is settling into your Yongchuan point. 
if possible, see if you can have a sensation of your Dantian sinking down to your Yongchuan point. And then at the same time, the Dantian is also supporting the Bai Hui point at the crown of your head. At this point, we've completed the scan of the body. And hopefully, we have an awareness of all sensations in the fascial suited. From here, we'll start to engage reverse breathing in order to um, be able to use the power of the pelvis and all the viscera, fascial tissue, and extend that to the soles, feet, and the palms of the hands. If you're standing there and you're holding all the requirements of a hollow chest and a round back, and you're seated into your pelvis, if you maintain this Han Shung Ba Bei and inhale, then you will end up having to inhale into your lower abdomen because your chest will not be allowed to rise up because then you would lose the hollowing of your chest. And your back, you would have to compress it slightly into your Dantian. Otherwise, if you breathe out your abdomen, you would lose the uh, connection from the sternum down to your Dantian. If you hold this posture correctly over a long period of time, you will naturally develop reverse breathing. So this is the uh, Chen Tai Ji way of doing reverse breathing. However, in this practice, we consciously practice reverse breathing. So hollow the chest, make sure that your torso is round in front, hollowed in front and round in back. Bring your awareness to your Dantian and inhale. As you inhale, make sure that the abdomen does not come out and the chest does not come out. If you restrict your abdomen and chest from coming out as you inhale and exhale, then you're basically doing reverse breathing. At this point, with your intention and breath in your Dantian and gently restraining using your abdominal muscles to restrain the abdomen from going out as you inhale, you, are, you have established the three internal harmonies. If you're practicing uh, Chen Tai Chi style meditation, standing meditation, at this point, you just leave your awareness on your Dantian and continue practicing reverse breathing for whatever length of time is appropriate for you to do standing. Now we transition to the three external harmonies. While you're maintaining reverse breathing on the inhale, pull across the front of the torso so that your right shoulder and left hip pull towards each other and your left shoulder and right hip pull to each other as well. What you're doing is you're actually making the torso a little bit rounder, more of a con cave shape in front and more of a convex shape in back. This will cause your chest to hollow more and your back to round further. And you'll start to feel compression across the front of your torso and a sense of the air pressure building up in your lower abdomen. Feel for the stretch across your back as you are pulling across the front. Make sure you do not lean forward or back. Adjust your posture. Make sure that your shoulders are still stacking onto your hips and your hips are stacking down to your Yongchuan point and that your head is still up with a light energy at the crown. See if as you do this, as you squeeze down on the breath, see if you can feel an increased sense of pressure in your Dantian that extends down to the soles of your feet and up to the crown of your head. On the exhale, just release the tension across the front and allow the back to naturally unwind and unstretch. Do not pull it across the front, just use the natural elasticity across the large mass of muscle and uh, fascia and your back side of your body to unwind. On the inhale, you're contracting your shoulder and hip to the opposite side. On the exhale, you're allowing it to expand. 
This is the first external harmony, the hips and shoulders. Note that in some schools they teach that the hips and shoulders are harmonized on the same side. For example, the right shoulder may match the right hip and the left shoulder may match the left hip. There's actually good reasons to look at each way depending on the particular context. For this particular exercise, in order to maximize the sense of compressing into the Dantian and reverse breathing, it would be best for you to concentrate on a cross body closing as if there's an X shape and the legs of the X are shrinking in towards your Dantian. The next external harmony is the elbows and knees. So while maintaining the pattern where we inhaled and exhaled, and brought the elbows towards, I mean, brought the shoulders to the opposite hip, we'll now engage the elbows and knees. What you want to do for the elbows is you want to feel as if you're pulling from the back of the armpits across the front of the torso. And this causes your upper arms to spiral inwards towards the front of your body. At the same time, feel the knees rotating from hip joints as they pull in towards the Dantian, make sure you grip the ground firmly with the soles of your feet. Because what we want to do is we want to use the gripping of the ground with the soles of the feet, one, to help engage more of the closing, and two, to stabilize the knees against collapsing inward. After you finish inhaling, you should end up with your palms facing forward and your elbows facing forward. And you should feel pulling from your knees towards the opposite elbow. Notice that you, they are pulling um, each other in a direct line across the surface of your body. So there will be a certain amount of winding as they sort of conform to you know the, the non geometric shape of your body. This is part of the spiraling. You don't want your knees and elbows to beeline towards each other in a simple geometric line. They should follow a spiral in towards the Dantian that matches the musculature of your body. At the full inhalation, you have hollowed your chest even more and brought your elbows in Release the, release the air out, allow the back to open, and the arms and legs to unwind. That was the second external harmony, knees and elbows. And the final step is to harmonize the hands and the feet. So building on the last movement where we spiraled and we connected the hips and the shoulders and the elbows and knees. Now we're going to engage the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet even more. Grip the ground with your feet and cup the palms of your hands while gently extending the fingers. Try to pull all the way from the palms across the front of your body towards your Dantian and then from the Dantian down to the soles of your feet on the opposite side. As you do this, your arms should rotate and spiral and your back, you should feel a stretch across your back and your lower hips. As you exhale, you release the tension across the front and allow the stretch across your back to gently unwind your arms. As you practice this, you'll notice that you'll have a very clean and natural spiral that originates in the center of your body and reaches all the way out to your fingertips and it's in also engaged to the toes of your feet. This is the fundamental silk reeling energy that is used in Chen Taiji and Bagua, and to a lesser extent in Xing Yi. If you spiral your arms very strongly, then you end up with your arms facing, palms of your hands facing up and lifting upwards on the inhale. And then on the, un and then on the exhale and unwinding, they'll be pressing downwards. This is the lifting pressing Mei Gong as taught in the Xin Yi Dao system by Master Li Tai Liang. If the spiraling of the arms is subdued and hidden, 
and the palms will tend to face each other and come closer and the arms will pull together compressing on the inhale and the exhale they'll widen and expand so it'll seem as if there's a large ball in front of your torso and you're squeezing it on the inhale and allowing it to expand back on the exhale notice that this movement originates at the torso not at the hands so you should feel that as you pull in on the sternum and sink into the dantian and connect to the palms of your hands this is actually squeezing your hands together at the same time there's a stretch across the back of your arms all the way to the mingman in your back and down to the back of your pelvis and the stretch should actually reach all the way to the soles of your feet as you release this tightening across the front the stretch on the back unwinds and it seems as if the ball is expanding this is a qigong that you often see chen tai chi masters practice in fact master chen jia sen has a video of exactly this qigong one way you can approach this video is that in chen jia sen's video he had suggests doing a 10 minute standing meditation and then doing the qigong if you can do this body scan in 10 minutes you can transition directly into chen jia sen's uh neigong And that concludes this video. Thank you for your support. If you found this video useful, consider making a donation to my Patreon page for Berkeley Xinyi Dao. And if you're interested in taking classes in person, check our meetup page, www.meetup.com, xyd-meetup. Thank you very much.